Dave and welcome to the Weird Kids Show with another episode. I'm back, you know, it's hard to get rid of me. So this week I think I'm going to do yet another bottle. I'm on this bottle kick. The last few bottles I did, I've been using polymer clay, Sculpey, uh, which requires it to be baked in the oven and sculpted and everything. But this week I'm going to try something different. I'm going to show you something different. First of all, I wanted to show you the bottle that started it all okay I I gotta tell you I, I feel I can do so much better than this this is uh, I didn't make a video on this this was one that I was working on uh, because I hadn't done one for a good while and I was just playing around with it uh, so I'm not 100% happy with it but yeah this is what this is the first bottle that I made when I started back up again just screwing around uh, primo polymer teeth I did a tentacle a bunch of eyes and then there's like some gills and I uh, started playing around with the paint scheme and uh, I, I ended up getting some cracks and stuff here in it because it it dropped on the floor uh, so I just kind of put it on a shelf and forgot about it but somebody saw it on the shelf and they made a comment about wanting to learn how how to do that and so that's why I decided I had uh, better do a video for you guys just to kind of show you uh, what can be done with polymer clay <clears throat> another one to uh, honorable mention here's something else that I was screwing around with now this was done super fast because it was a test all right I wanted to see if you could actually do a, a corpsing on a bottle uh, in which case, yes, you can. Uh, this was done so fast. I didn't do a video on it because I just wanted to see if it could be done. Uh, and I already had these little, these are like little suction cups that I made for some tentacles I had done a while ago. And there was a bunch of extra ones. Uh, so they weren't made to fit these glass cabochons. In fact, you can see one of them fell out. I got it here. Because it was just pretty much tacked in was super glue um, I just wanted to see if it would work so I just stuck those on there and then I just roughly glued on the glass cabochons and then I took my clear plastic uh, well actually this was the white um, plastic and wrapped it and it took my heat gun to it to see if I could do a corpsing on a bottle and yeah it works um, what I probably have to do after is uh, put some tape to cover these eyes spray paint the whole thing to give it a primer and then paint it I mean there's still areas that need going over and then the cap and stuff would have to be done but uh, uh, it's an honorable mention that's something else you can do too but that's not what we're doing today I wanted to show you a few other options <coughs> another mention before we get into this is these guys here these you can buy at the dollar store it's these little bottles some of them have corks some of them have caps now I do have some longer ones of these with caps somewhere and I have done a bunch of bottles little creatures using uh, they have these with the metal caps in about this size uh, much bigger I gotta find them there somewhere uh, now the ease I've used this for like uh, medicine bottles in my Dr. Morbius and his custom made pouch but uh, these work really well you can sculpt on the glass and then sculpt on the cap separately so that you can screw it on they work really good um, these you could sculpt on there and then have the cork come come you know it's, it's operational if you wanted because uh, you got to have in your uh, apothecary cabinet you know there's all different size bottles with different remedies and potions and concoctions and everything else plus it looks impressive when you have a diversity there you know so but what are we doing today today I've got this bottle uh, I know somebody who drinks this German, I'm not going to name this drink, although you probably know what it is. It's a German liquor. I think it tastes horrible. 
uh, and I rarely drink, as I've explained to you before, but I ask people for bottles because I stockpile these things. I've got a bunch of these things, and I just let them sit there until I need them. Well, today I need them, and I'm not going to really worry about the labels, and you won't have to either, so I didn't really need to remove the label. So, I'm not going to use Sculpey. What I'm going to use today is craft foam. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to cut and glue craft foam onto this thing in a manner that it looks like um, blacksmithed, pounded, riveted steel or copper. We could go that route too. But whenever you see some kind of a primitive, uh, you can almost say steampunk style, uh, when you have uh, metal that's all patched together, uh, like on a bulkhead on a ship or something like that, uh, especially with copper, then you'll have rivets on the corners where it's attached. So, in order to do this, you're going to need these craft foam sheets. Okay, that's your first thing. These are cheap. This whole thing is cheap. Craft foam. Super glue. Buy it at the dollar store. It's cheap. Now these are fasteners. These are those things when you get uh, like a like a bunch of sheets of paper, like a little booklet, but it's not a professionally printed booklet. So let's say you get a report at work and it's got let's say 30 pages and you get this thing and it's got holes punched in it and it's held together with these fasteners which all it is is that tack you push through the hole and then you bend it over in the back side okay so that's gonna serve as our rivets now the only real time consuming thing with this project is that uh, with the rivets okay with these with these fasteners we're gonna call them rivets yeah I need to cut and get rid of that extra so I'm gonna push that up as close as I can so you're gonna want some uh, these are needle nose pliers uh, but you can get dikes or um, cutters or anything else all you want you want to make sure it's got that cutting edge on there so I want to cut and get rid of that tab all right so we're going to be left with something like that i can always push down on it all right to make it flat and it's okay if you have a sharp <clears throat> pointy edge sticking out a little bit because this is foam and that is actually going to work at your advantage because when you put the super glue on there and stick that fastener on there and push down on it if it's got a little ragged edge on the end of it that's going to poke into the foam and that glue is going to dry and it's going to give you an extra added strength and anchor if you will all right so this is what's going to take the time all right so but first i'm going to get into this bottle all right so this is a a rectangular bottle, we'll call it that. It's, it's got square edges and stuff. You could do this with a rounded bottle too. You're just going to have to play around with how you lay out the, we're going to call them uh, plates of steel. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a thin strip. It's about, I don't know, let's say, let's say an inch and a half, two inches. I'm going to do one that's uh, a couple inches, just, I'm not measuring, I'm going to cut that in half, you can cut smaller, longer, alright, so, what I'm going to do first is decide where I want that, so that, that could be one spot, some of the, the bottom ones is not going to matter as much, you know, uh, what you're going to see is what's on the top. Alright, so I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So, 
make sure my glue is <clears throat> okay that's good you always got to be careful when you open a new thing of super glue because uh, if you're squeezing on it or it's been squeezed and you puncture that seal uh, some of them some of these have the it's got a little point in the cap and you're supposed to just poke it down in there and that breaks the seal then there's the other ones like this to where it's got like a little nozzle inside the nozzle that when you screw that on that punctures it and sometimes when you do that you can see a like a squirt of super glue that come out and uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten a large amount of super glue on your hands but that stuff gets uh, considerably hot it can it can feel like it's burning you and not to mention it's just a mess to clean up and stuff so I'm just randomly putting some super glue on there and slap that on there get that started and uh, you'll find I can already feel it's getting warm as it's curing touch that it's hot super glue and foam I'm telling you you're gonna have to actually you're gonna destroy this thing meaning the foam uh, if you wanted to, to uh, take it off it's gonna actually shred it so it's a good idea to make sure you're exactly one where you want to be before you put that down on there all right so did that I already start to get a little bit on my fingers uh, that's the thing every time I work with the uh, super glue I don't know about you guys but every time I work with it I always end up getting super glue on my fingers and I end up going to work the next day with like a like chunky residue on my hand that goes on for a few days I'm always picking and peeling it off and uh, alright so there's our first piece nothing spectacular big deal what what's what are you doing Dave okay well I'm gonna show you we're gonna just keep going so this one here I think I'm gonna go here overlapping this one here okay so let's do that I'm gonna fold that over I'm gonna put some glue on here fold that over so now it's overlapping and I just push it now we're not going to be worried see uh, already you got super glue that's starting to seep out on the sides we're not worried about that okay because we're going to paint this whole thing a flat black as a uh, primer and a base and then we're going to paint it again after and I'll show you and that's where the magic happens all right so we got this piece here I'm gonna glue this one down you don't need much glue I'm telling you this stuff will adhere really really good on glass it, I'll tell you uh, and I don't super glue has always been one of my go-to's that's like one of my main I, I love super glue. I will always use super glue. Um, all right, so now we have a little overlap there. Okay, so uh, technically, if you know, um, if I was doing this and you guys weren't here to join me for this, I would com completely cover the whole thing. But because uh, I'm sharing this with you guys, and we're uh, this is a tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and put those rivets on that one bit there. I don't know why these aren't cutting very good. I'm going to have to get another set. Okay. There we go. Like I said, the most time consuming for this is not gluing the uh, it's not gluing the uh, foam pieces down it's uh cutting all these rivets okay so i got one down of course and fingers are all sticky yep so i did it i got i got super glue on my fingers 
Well, I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know it was going to happen so early on. Kind of gluing it to my fingers. Yeah, this can be, you know, you could use tweezers or something, but, you know, it's, uh, you work with super glue and uh, you do it, you use a lot of it, then, uh, bound to happen okay this is what we got so basically this whole bottle has been probably pieced together with sheet metal that's been blacksmithed and pounded and technically if there was nothing here uh, nothing else here we would put one here and here okay but we're not gonna want to just keep going overlapping and and we're only gonna put these on the spots where the metal we're going to call it metal is visible and uh, you know and this still it doesn't still doesn't look like much now but you'll see the magic is really going to happen when we paint this and start doing a dry brush all right so i'm going to keep on i'm going to go ahead and cover this whole thing overlapping I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how it came out and uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting those rip rivets on there showing you where I'm gonna put them and then uh, there might be something else I'm gonna incorporate into that we're not gonna get there yet first things first is just covering this whole thing with the metal if you will all right guys so hang tight I appreciate you being here Really, uh, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have a show. So uh, your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. I, I, I love the comments and the interaction, and it really uh, puts the wind in my sails when I go on Facebook and see that people have tagged me or they've shared in the Trio of Terror group that they've they've actually done one of the projects that I've done a tutorial on, and, and that that keeps me going if you will you know so I appreciate you guys so hang tight we're coming back alright guys and we're back and this is what I've come up with okay so basically all you're doing is cutting little squares rectangles odd shapes and you're gluing it onto the bottle alright and that's to give the appearance of that it's it's all been put together with plates of steel or maybe that it's been the bottle has been it's been formed around the bottle or who knows maybe this is what the bottles made of steel maybe it has to be steel uh, to contain a spirit maybe it's like a spirit bottle that contains an ir evil spirit or a gin or something like that or some kind of a a demon that's trapped inside the bottle uh, still you probably still not like okay where are we going with this uh, but it's gonna start to come together uh, now what I need to do is every place you see a flat edge usually in the corners like here and here I'm gonna want to put these rivets alright so this one here is only gonna require one I'm going to put one here, one here, one here, so all the way around, and then I'll put some around the top. So what I did here in the top was I, I cut a piece, traced the cap around it, cut the hole, and then slid it over the top, all right? And so I'll put, like, rivets all around that, and I did the cap, so there'll be, like, a rivet there, maybe a few here, whatever. And then uh, I've got some other things I like to do to dress it up. But first things first, we're going to get those rivets on there. Uh, and then we're going to jump right into painting pretty much already. Uh, i got one other, a few other elements we're going to add to this right before we do that. But uh, it's starting to come together. So hang tight, guys. Uh, this is super easy. So far, I've only used two sheets of the uh, craft foam. The craft foam is super cheap. Uh, for two bucks, I was able to get like a big uh, container of these. There's like 200 in this uh, container, uh, only a couple bucks. The bottle was free, and super glue from the dollar store. So this has literally like cost me nothing to make so far. 
and wait until you see what it looks like in, when we're done. So hang tight. All right, guys, and we're back. And yes, so I went and I cut all of those fasteners, cut the little tabs off, and then with super glue, I went and fastened them all on the corners. So now we've got this like metal blacksmith bottle that's all riveted together. All right, so but it's the the look is not there yet. Okay, we this is just the we're forming this thing out. Uh, now is where we can start adding the little bells and whistles if we so choose to enhance this thing before we spray the whole thing with the uh, black primer. Okay. One thing I thought about was uh, I had a bunch of these. I think I got these at like the dollar store or something that came in a bag around Halloween and it's just these little uh, plastic skulls and I thought about epoxying that on there and then you can add things like uh, I've got some chain here, some craft chain that they sell you can even buy it in the craft section at Walmart. And I thought about like wrapping it around the neck, maybe crisscrossing it, gluing it in place, and wrapping it all around it. Oops, there goes our skull. Just to give it some added character if we want. Uh, and then the other thing that I have, uh, I know they sell these at Walmart too, but you can get them at Michael's. Um, Hobby Lobby, but I found them on Wish.com, uh, which is super cheap. However, uh, they're located in China, so you're going to wait a um, pretty long time. You can wait up to a month for them to arrive, but you can get a lot of these for a for pretty cheap price. Uh, this is only some of them, but I got this bag of little metal gears. All kinds of different gears here in different shapes and sizes. And this one here having like a little sprocket on there. Um, just um, all kinds of gears. And if we if we wanted to, we could randomly glue them on there. Alright, so I might try, I'm gonna play around with that. I'm gonna play around with the chain. I'm gonna play around with putting that skull on there. Uh, and just play around with it and see what I end up with and then how we did it how I did it where I put it uh, but you can do whatever you want at this point in time you could turn it into a steampunk type of bottle themed bottle or you can just leave it like that paint it we're gonna get into the painting technique here after but uh, yeah this is what we got so far and so I'm gonna keep working on this thing we we'll come back and we'll see what the final result looks like and then we're going to move on to the painting, which is where we really make this thing pop. So hang tight, guys. All right, guys. And this is what we got. Okay, so I took some of those uh, gears and just randomly put some here and there. Didn't want to overwhelm it. I didn't want to go on each one because I think that would overwhelm it. Uh, just enough to give it some kick. And then I took that chain and I started at the bottom of the bottleneck and just kind of wrapped around and put glue as I was wrapping around to secure the whole thing in place. And then I went ahead and glued that skull on the top. What do you think? And this is super cheap, uh, but we're not done yet. Now we're going to get into the magic. The magic is the painting. So right now, I'm going to tell you, simply, I'm just going to take the can of black, flat black spray paint and just spray paint the whole thing to give it its uh, primer coat and its base. I buy my paint at Walmart or Home Depot, and I go for the cheapest stuff they have. It's 99 cent cans of flat black. Uh, when I go to Home Depot, I'll stock up on them. I'll buy a bunch of cans of that stuff and then uh, keep it on hand so that I always have it when I need it. So. Uh, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to blast this thing, and uh, once it's dried, I'm going to start showing you how I'm going to paint it. So, uh, if you've made it this far, stick with me because we're almost there, guys. 
Thank you for being here. All right, guys, so I took this outside and then just blasted it with some flat black spray paint, okay? So now it's all uniform and it's flat, which is what I like to start from. So now we can go a number of different ways. Uh, one thing that I've wanted to try, uh, I'm a little leery of it, I gotta do some research on it, uh, and I'm not gonna do it today in this video, is oxidized copper. Now oxidized copper, as you can, uh, if you look it up, you can see that it's an, it's an old copper that's starting to oxidize, and when copper starts to oxidize, it starts getting this like, let's call it a greenish rust on it, okay? I would love to do that on here, um, but I, I, I want to do a bit of testing and research before that I do that. So I might make another one of these in a oxidized copper. If you would like to see that, please let me know down in the comments and I'll, uh, if I get enough of you guys interested in that, then I can do a video where I'm going to tackle oxidized copper. Um, but we are going to go with a metallic on this, all right, because this is metal. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with something that I do know how to do, and that is to make rusted metal, all right? And um, it's something I've just always seemed to have used, and it's always seemed to have worked very well for me, and I'm going to show you that formula now. So for that... Uh, it's good to have a chip brush, one inch chip brush, because we're going to cover a lot of areas. Uh, we're going to need a palette. I'm going to get that. Uh, I don't have that in front of me. Um, I'm going to need some silver. Uh, acrylic paint. This is actually an enamel. That'll work too. This one's made by Folk Art, and this one's actually sterling. It'll translate to be the same. Okay, so we need that. Uh, some of the other metallic colors you could have if you wanted is like uh, this is metallic this is from folk art pure gold uh, this is an antique copper uh, we have an antique gold um, I don't have brass that could be an option too but the other thing that I'm going to need that I use this is a folk art this is called Pueblo alright you can see it's it's rust okay so we're going to make this thing a rusty steel bottle, all right? But the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to dry brush it, the entire thing, focusing on the edges uh, and get, you know, getting spots here and there on the, to indicate metal. All right, so I've got my palette and I've got some, uh, this is sterling silver. Anyways, I got some silver on, uh, on the brush here. And then I'm just going to dry brush it and just swipe it. All right, and on the chain, even on the skull, we're just going to dry brush this whole thing. And this is where you really start to make this thing pop. And you could leave it just the way it is if you wanted to. Let me just show you all right what this thing's looking like already, just from dry brushing that silver on there. It's really starting to make it, you know, make it look like it's actually something steel. All right, but we're gonna go even further. We're gonna make this like a rusty, you know, who knows? What do you guys think is in this thing? You know, why does it have to be so uh, fortified? You know, with the, it's got the skull on it, which is an indication of possibly death or evil or something. But it's all plates of steel uh, and then chain and stuff like that. So maybe it's trying to, maybe it's containing something or who knows. Maybe this thing has a potion or formula in it that's got a profound uh, properties to it. So what do you think, guys? Tell me what you think down in the comments what's inside this bottle that makes that has that it looks like this all right so it doesn't take much this is the part it's it's actually gets pretty quick 
because all you gotta do is do it a once over. All right, so now it's, and it's, you know, I got a tiny bit of paint on me, but that's one thing about great about these enamels and the acrylics, they dry super quick. All right, and I'm already handling it, and this is what we got. Okay, we could leave it just like that if we wanted to, but like I said, I want to go with the rust. That's something I always like. Uh, and so I'm going to get some of this Pueblo. I'm going to put it in there. <clears throat> now this is something, let me tell you. I, I, I don't know, I, I've started doing this technique. This technique has gone way back since I used to build 135th scale military models and dioramas and stuff. And I used to belong to clubs and uh, entered competitions and everything else. And uh, one of the things that's a good go-to, I've always done this. However, we're not going to just simply dry brush the Pueblo onto the bottle and leave it. All right. What you have to do for this to look good and look convincing is you have to work it into the existing paint job you've already done. All right, so it's good. Uh, we already got that on there. I'm starting to dry brush, dry brush, getting it on there, just to get it on there. All right. But we're not gonna just leave it. We're gonna work it and blend it into the, the rest of the paint. All right. Work it, work it, work it. So you're gonna have uh, high and low places where the rust is gonna be more prominent than other areas, uh, but you'll still have hints of silver. So now more than ever, if anything, uh, it it looks more like real steel. But uh, now you can see down here it's really heavy. All right, but that's okay because what we do is we just keep working it, blending it. And as it's working its way into the foam, and that's the one thing I've discovered, is this foam, this craft foam, it takes paint on it beautifully. All right, when you put that spray paint on there, <clears throat> it puts that um, primer, that base on there, and then when you put your acrylics on there, it just seems to take it so well. Uh, I really love painting craft foam. It's something that really uh, it's satisfying uh, because it takes it so well and you can do so much with it and stuff. And uh, yep, so here we go. We're just continuing to blend. Now, one thing you could do if you really, you could put some kind of a, a latch on top of here instead of the skull. Maybe there is. Ooh, there's a fingerprint. I need to be careful with that. Uh, maybe. Let me wipe that off. That's the other thing, too, is you can wipe. Before we seal this thing, you can wipe some of the paint away if you've made a mistake or put too much and you're having a hard time getting it to blend. But uh, instead of putting this skull on there, maybe you could put like a hoop. Uh, kind of a, a latching system and then some kind of a big lock on the front of it so something's inside of there that needs to be contained to the point to where you need to put a lock on it to keep somebody from opening it well where do you get a lock a cool lock that would look good with this well I know my buddy Keith from cobwebs and candlesticks makes these awesome uh, locks that he's hand sculpted and uh, they're functional like you can snap the the hoop off of it and you can put it on a chain or whatever whatever you want to and uh, they're just really cool so I'm thinking man something like this would have been really cool to have a kind of a latch system on here and then one of Keith's locks hanging down. So it's like, okay, you, you do not open this because if you do, something bad's gonna happen. And uh, some of the designs 
that Keith does with those locks is just absolutely, I love it. I love them. And anyways, I think he's got, yeah, he's got an Etsy store to where you can go and you can buy these locks from Keith and some other cool stuff too, like his magnets and everything else. But, uh, anyways, this is what I've done. All right, so I went a little heavy there. Need to work it. You uh, you can take your brush and wipe off excess. Come back in and keep working an area, and it'll actually start to thin out and blend a little bit more if you think you've gone too dark on something. So, All right, so this was quick. <clears throat> and that's it. We're done. Actually, no, we weren't done, okay? After the matter, I said, okay, we're done, blah, blah, blah. Now, I looked at this thing, and I realized I had some of these little tiny glass cabochons, and so I decided to give this guy some eyes, all right? Uh, you can buy glass cabochons on Amazon, eBay, or whatever, and they come in all different sizes, and I I've, I've bought, like, a variety pack of large to the tiny I don't know what millimeter they are but they're I think the smallest one they got so now we are done and so that's one serious potion bottle guys uh, or containment for a spirit with an evil gin or something like that but let me know what you think's inside here and what this bottles for anyways now we're done Anyways, I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you guys try this. It would be fun. It's always fun when you guys try to do some of these projects that I that I bring you. And um, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and hit the bell. It's going to inform you when I upload future videos, and there's so much more to come. Uh, while you're at it, check out my brother's uh, Keith from Cobwebs and Candlesticks and Vic Springston. From Monster Misfits. Uh, together we are the Trio of Terror. Uh, come join us on Facebook in the Trio of Terror group on Mondays, Monday nights, where we do our Monday night live stream. Come in and say hello. But, anyways, guys, uh, until next time, I appreciate you. Peace.